First, let us see what is mean by system. System, anything in the world is system. If you give any input, if it gives an output, then it is system. Whatever it may be. It may be a biological system, or it may be a chemical system, it may be a mechanical system, or it may be an electrical system, then what are these systems? So, if you give any input to a physical object, if it gives, if it responds for that input, then it is called system. A physical object, if it responds for an input, then it is said to be a system. So, here we are taking such systems. The problem here is always I want to control the system because then only I get a desired performance by the system. For example, I want to drive a car. Car is a system. In that, uh, it is a MMO system, let us assume that it is a SASO system, single input, single output system. In that, uh, the single input is acceleration. The acceleration is the input, the output is the speed, that is all. I am considering it as a single input, single output system. In that system, if I give acceleration, it will go, that is all. A system. So, it depends upon the acceleration, the speed will be there. If I give more acceleration, more speed, less acceleration, less speed. Suppose I want to ride always at 60 km per hour. I calculated, I am very well, uh, I am very good at thermodynamics. That's why I calculated how much uh, the fuel flow rate I calculated. Accordingly, I gave the pressure on the accelerator for 60 km per hour. Initially, the car is driving, uh, uh, moving at 60 km per hour. Let us assume. Can I expect it? I am not changing any pressure on the accelerator. I am giving the same pressure on the accelerator. That is uh, the pressure required for 60 km per hour. I am not changing the input pressure on the accelerator. Can I expect it will, it will always run at 60 km per hour? Can I expect always? Why? I am giving a required input. I am not changing the input. Can I expect that always it will run at 60 km per hour? Yes or no? No. Yes. Very good answer. But uh, why? Huh? Road surface. So, let us assume that road is smooth but inclination is different. So, it may be positive inclination or negative inclination. If it is negative inclination, for the same acceleration it will go higher than 60 km per hour. If it is inclination is positive, then it will go less than the speed for which I am giving the same pressure, it will go less than 60 km per hour. So, our road slope is changing, that is why that acts as disturbance to the process, that is why you cannot expect that the car will run at 60 km per hour. Any other disturbance may enter into the system? Wind speed. Wind speed. If the wind is against the direction of car, definitely there will be a decrease in speed. If the wind direction is aiding the direction of car, then there will be increase in speed. But I am not changing the pressure on the accelerator, but the speed is changing. But I want to ride on the same 60 km per hour. Then what is the only way? I have to adjust the accelerator pressure. Otherwise, it is not possible to drive at 60 km per hour when the disturbance is acting on the system. The disturbances are road slope and wind direction. While disturbances are acting on the system, if I want to drive the car at 60 km per hour, I need a controller. I need a controller. Now the controller is open because I calculated for 60 km per hour what is the pressure required on the accelerator. I calculated and it is given to the controller that is to my mind. Accordingly, my mind, the controller, gives the required pressure on the accelerator, but it is failing. It is not run, running at 60 km per hour because of disturbances entering into the system. That is why it is not possible to drive the car at 60 km per hour if we did not consider the disturbances. How we can consider the disturbances? We cannot measure the disturbances. What is the slope? We cannot measure. What is the wind direction? At what speed it is, whether it is aiding or whether it is opposing, we do not know. That is why it is not possible to measure the disturbances. Instead, we will measure the output that, that will be used to drive the car at 60 km per hour. So, this is the example of car in that uh, the wind speed and road conditions are acting as disturbance to the car. Again, the controller, the mind, gives the required pressure on the accelerator. 
Tesla in the car is driving at 60 km per hour if there is no disturbance, if the disturbance is zero. But it is not so in practice, the disturbance will be there, that's why there may change in speed, how it can be maintained at 60 km per hour. The next system. So this is called open loop system. Here we are not using the output to adjust the input. That's why it is called open loop system. So open loop control system fails to maintain the output at the constant value or desired value. So output cannot be maintained at desired value because of disturbances. This is the feedback control system. Actually how I am I will maintain the bar speed at 60 km per hour? I am looking at the speedometer. If the speed is less than 60 km per hour, I give more pressure on the accelerator. That's why again it will reach to 60 km. If it exceeds 60 km, then I will do less pressure on the, I will decrease the pressure on the accelerator. That's why I am adjusting according to the feedback. What is the feedback? The actual speed is measured by speedometer and it is compared with the desired speed which is in my mind. The desired speed is in my mind that is 60 km per hour. It is compared with the actual speed that is 55 km per hour. The error is 5 km per hour. Accordingly, the controller, that mind, adjusts the pressure on the accelerator so that the car speed can be maintained at 60 km per hour. There is no need to measure the disturbances. Whatever may be the disturbances. The disturbance may be uh, road conditions or the disturbance may be wind conditions or it, it may be because of in, in, inferior fuel quality. Because of that, for the same pressure, today it may run at 60 km per hour. Tomorrow it may not run at 60 km per hour. Because of fuel quality. So whatever may be the disturbance. Here, we need not bother about the disturbance. The only thing is, you have to measure the output, you have to compare the output with the desired value. Any error is there, accordingly the controller has to adjust the input to the system. That is called the system. So, I think uh, now we can understand that uh, what is the need for controller and what is the need for uh, control system that we can understand. So the controller that we have to design for each system. Suppose I want, uh, I, I, I think uh, you know that uh, those who are learners, it's very difficult to maintain at 60 km per hour. Uh, if a car speed is 55 km, if they want to bring back to 60 km speed, they will give extra pressure. Then it will jump to 65, then uh, they will decrease, then it comes to 57, then they will oscillate like a second order system and it settles at uh, 60 km per hour. Those who are, but I am very expert in the field, that's why my, my adoptive controllers immediately adjust the controller such a way that smoothly it reaches 60 km per hour. So, the design of controller is very, very important. Suppose I am riding always on old car. Uh, tomorrow I am going to buy new car, means I cannot bring immediately 60 km in the new car because the behavior of the system is different. Old car system behavior is different. The new car the system behavior is different. That's why the controller has to learn the new parameters. The controller parameters must be different. But uh, our mind is the adaptive controller. It will automatically find the controller uh, controller parameters. Uh, by experience, it will adopt itself to find the new controller parameters. That's why no problem. But if you want to make it as an automatic, automatic control. If you want to do it as an automatic, instead of mind, if I want to put a machine there, then you have to do a lot of things. So how to make the controller automatic? Automatic controller. Yeah, so far we have seen our mind as a controller, but we want to make it as automatic. But to do that, we need a lot of knowledge about the system. We need a lot of knowledge about the system. For that, we are modeling the process. Why we have to model the process? What is mathematical modeling? What is mathematical modeling? The mathematical modeling is uh, set of all differential equations governing the system. Set of all differential equations governing the system. Why differential equation? I hate always differential equation because from my college days the differential equation irritated me because uh, solving differential equation is very difficult. Mathematicians spend about deep two centuries because all systems in the world are represented by differential equations. Why? Different. So if I work five hours, I get five hours. That's all. So it is called algebraic equation. 
but uh, systems cannot be represented by algebraic equations because, for example, if we take a power supply, take a power supply, in that, if we turn on the power supply, I am giving 5 volt, I am turning on a 5 volt power supply, I am just turning on. Can I expect immediately 5 volt? Can I expect immediately 5 volt? No. It takes some milliseconds and on a second, depends upon the quality of my um, power supply, it takes some time. So, theoretically, it is a step signal. Initially, the input output voltage is 0, as soon as I switch, the output voltage is 5 volt. That is, uh, that is theoretical. Uh, Ideal condition at zero time the voltage is zero. At the same zero time voltage is five volt. Step means what? Uh, this vertical line. It means at the same time zero volt. At the same time five volt. It is not physically possible. Either I can be at my college or here. I cannot be stay at both colleges. That is never possible. Not at all possible. So physically. Two things cannot happen simultaneously. That's why it is not a step signal, it is a ramp signal. It is a ramp signal. So I turned on the switch at zero time, but the output voltage is available after some time only. How to represent this waveform? How to represent the waveform? To represent that, we need differential equation. In algebraic equation, y equal to mx. When x equal to zero, output is zero volt. When x equal to one, the output is five volt. So, so a vertical line is not possible mathematically. If uh, uh, x axis is time axis, it is not possible to draw a vertical line practically because two things will happen at the same time. That is not possible. So, if you want to represent the slope, means uh, you need a differential equation. So, all systems in the world are represented by differential equations. So, why I have to represent the system by differential equations? But nowadays we used to say that computer simulation, computer simulation. Simulation is nothing but mathematics. In mathematics, those days they will find the model of the system. The differential equation which governs the system, they will find. They will theoretically find what is the output. That is simulation. Whatever the mathematical mathematician doing is simulation. But the computer takes those equations and gives the result immediately. That's all. But only one person worked to get the result. That same program is run again and again. That's why immediately we got the result. But anyhow, the mathematician is inside. Inside the computer, mathematician is there. So, simulation is nothing but mathematically finding the output. That's all. Why do you have to find mathematically output? Suppose I want to do an experiment, which costs very huge cost is required to conduct that experiment. I can conduct twice or thrice only in my lifetime. I want to travel move, to move. Can I do many times? I can do only once. If anything happens, if anything goes wrong, that's all. So, those things uh, I need a mathematical model to simulate what will be the output I want to know. That's why mathematical model is required. Before doing the actual experiment, I have to find mathematically what would be the output. What would be the output. So if I know that, I can do the practical, I can do practical. So the mathematical model is the set of all differential equations that governs the system or that governs the behavior of the system, that governs the behavior of the system. That is very, very important to know about the system, to know about the system. How we can get the differential equation from the fundamental principles? By making, uh, uh, we can do um, mass balance, energy balance, momentum balance. By doing those things, we can get the differential equations. So we know that uh, any energy energy can neither be created nor destroyed. So we can balance before and after some uh, dynamics. Uh, what is the energy before that? What is the energy after that? We can compare. Mass we cannot destroy. So it will be one form or another form. That's why what is the mass entering inside, what is the mass leaving outside the system. So from that we can write the mathematical models. So by using those principles, fundamental principles, we can get the mathematical model. Those mathematical models can be used to simulate the behavior of the system. So without doing physical experiments, we can get the output. So simulation is uh, to get the output.
without doing physical experiments. It's uh, about uh, mathematical modeling is why do you need the mathematical modeling? Suppose I want to design a controller. I want to design a controller. The controller um, <coughs> has to control the speed of a motor or speed of the car or something has to do. So uh, to design the controller, I need a physical system. So instead of having a physical system, if I know the mathematical model, a soft system, soft model, mathematical model is nothing but soft model. I can nowadays if you say soft model means you can easily understand. So by using that soft model, I can design the controller. Once I design the controller, actually I can implement in the real-time system. So design the, to design the controller, we need the mathematical model. So to study about the behavior of the system, to design the controller, we need the mathematical model. That's why we can simulate the system. There are uh, many types of systems. Uh, one is called a uh, uh, stable system, another one is unstable system. Open loop, unstable system. If it is closed loop, then only it is stable, otherwise unstable. Open loop, unstable system. Right? Very good example is bike. Bike is an open loop, unstable system. If you didn't ride the bike, it is unstable, it will fall. If you ride, then only it is stable. How we are riding the handlebar? If sometimes the handlebar is locked, it will fall. You know, have, it, it used to happen in many uh, many times. The handlebar is locked, uh, it will fall. So actually, what we are doing is when riding, if it falls on the right hand side, it will turn this way. If it falls the other way, it will turn this way. So by turning the handlebar right and left, the side is maintained vertical. Line is maintained vertical. So it is the mind is reading whether we are falling on the right hand side or whether we are falling on the left hand side. Accordingly, we are turning the handlebar right and left, the opposite way we are turning. That's why we are not falling. So it is a closed loop system. Closed loop stable system. Open loop unstable system. So if you want to know whether the system is uh, stable or unstable, how to find it? For that, we have to give some input. We have to give some input. If the system gives uh, unbounded, then the system is said to be unstable. That's all. Uh, within the range or for an engineer, if it is a measurable output, means bounded. For, an, for a mathematician, it is infinity, unbounded. Bounded means some number for mathematics. For an engineer, it should be within measurable limit. So any measurable output is bounded. For an engineer, so if the output is measurable, then it is bounded. For an engineer, for a mathematician, the output is uh, uh, not infinity, then it is measurable. For a mathematician, here this is a uh, bounded signal because if you integrate, if you integrate the signal, integrate means what? If you integrate the signal means what? What is x-axis? X-axis is time. Y-axis is magnitude. If you integrate, what you get? So the area under the graph is you will get. If you integrate from 0 to a particular point, area under, area under means that this area, the area enclosed this, you will get, if you integrate. If it is odd function, uh, positive value negative will getting subtracted, you may get, if you integrate this, uh, you will get 0. So that is different. So area under the graph you will get, if you integrate that. So if the integral value is definite, if the integral value is definite, then it is bounded signal. So if you integrate this, you get a definite value, that's why this is the bounded signal. If you give a bounded signal means the energy is constant. I am injecting a constant energy inside the system. So I am giving a bounded input. The output are also measurable. The output energy is constant, uh, bounded output, then the system is said to be stable. So for a bounded, measurable input I am giving, the output is also measurable. Then the system is said to be stable. So the system is said to be so, example for bounded signal, this is bounded signal, this is uh, uh, bounded signal, but the, within the limit always it is one, that is a bounded signal. Here, uh, this is also bounded signal, this is within that uh, limit. Here we see that unbounded signal, it goes exponentially, goes to infinity. That is why if we integrate up to infinity, we get zero. Infinity, total area under the graph is infinity, that is unbounded, 
Here also the magnitude goes on increases the tempo of the if you give a bounded signal as input to the system, if the output is bounded, then the system is said to be stable. So here this is a system. This is a system for this uh, we are getting a bounded input, we are getting, getting a bounded output, that's why this system is said to be stable. If an unstable system, even though I am giving a bounded input, I am giving a bounded input, the output is not bounded. For example, the cycle I am taking, I am giving push, I am pushing the cycle. But I cannot expect that always will be vertical. So it will fall after some time. Of some time it will fall. That's why it is unstable. So for a bounded input, but the input is bounded because I am giving a push means a constant energy is injected into the system. That's a bounded input. But the output is not bounded. That's why uh, the system is unstable. We are going to study about the linear control system only. What is mean by linear control? Whatever we are studying in the all uh, by units are linear control theory. What is linear control theory? If the system is represented by ordinary linear differential equation, ordinary linear differential equations, then it is linear and with the constant coefficients, WCC. If you find uh, the mathematical model of this uh, set of names, uh, writing KCL or KVL, writing KVL or KCL for a circuit is nothing but a mathematical model. Nothing but a mathematical model. Here, uh, this R, L, and C are constants, constant coefficients. In the differential equation, if you see, you see the difference, this is the differential equation. But if this is integral differential equation, if you once again differentiate this, you get a different equation of second order. Here, if you see, uh, this R is constant, L is constant, 1 by C is constant. So, it is a differential equation with constant coefficients. Uh, this is uh, uh, total differential equation, that's why right. ordinary linear differential equation. It is not nonlinear. There is no nonlinear functions involved in this differential equation. So, if the differential equation is represented by ordinary linear differential equation with constant coefficient, then the system is said to be linear. We are studying the systems which are linear only in all the five chapters. That I want to mention here. How to find whether the system is linear or not? What is the rule behind it? Supervision. If the system obeys supervision principle, then the system is said to be linear. The system is said to be linear. If, uh, if it obeys supervision principle, I am giving one input now, I am uh, measuring the output. Again, I am giving another input for the time measuring the output. I am combining these two inputs, I am giving the same. Uh, the combined input as input to the system, if the output is combination of uh, earlier output means the system is said to be linear, but uh, the input is multiplied by some constant A and B to prove the homogeneity. So, if uh, it follows uh, supervision principle, then the system is said to be linear. This is uh, a system, linear system, it uh, gives uh, Order and differential equation with uh, constant coefficients. What is solving a differential equation? Suppose I want to find the output. Uh, what is current through the circuit I want to find? Because here the battery is given. Let's say I want to find the current. What we have to do? We have to solve this differential equation. We have to solve this differential equation. If we solve this differential equation, we will get the current. In the mathematics class, uh, uh, differential equations are given. Finally, what you will write? You will write the algebraic equation. In the differential equation, d by d square y by dt square plus b dy by dt plus c uh, y equal to some uh, uh, f of t. Some differential equation is given. For that, the solution is y equal. Finally, you will write in mathematics class y equal. It means converting the differential equation into algebraic equation or steady state value. What is the final value? Final output. Finding that is called the solution of differential equation. Here also, if you want to find the time current, it means you have to solve the differential equation. The another form of differential equation is transfer function. So, transfer function is nothing but representing the same differential equation in another form in S domain. S domain means uh, taking Laplace transform of uh, uh, the given differential equation. If you take Laplace transform, when we can take Laplace transform? 
the differential equation is linear, then only we can take lambda cell form. If the initial conditions are zero, initial conditions are zero means there is no charge in the capacitor, there is no current through the inductor, and D equal to zero means initial conditions are zero. But there is no energy towards the resistor, that's why we need not bother about this. There is no energy at the D equal to zero in these two energy storing elements, then initial condition is zero. If initial condition is zero, you take the plus and so for this, and put in a convenient form like this, uh, then it is called a transfer function. Here, the voltage across the capacitor is the output we are assuming. The voltage across the capacitor is the output we are assuming. So, to find the voltage across the capacitor, I have to solve the differential equation to find the voltage across the capacitor. So, I, if the initial conditions are zero, I can represent the same differential equation. The convenient form for the DC of S by D of S uh, uh, equal to 1 upon Mc S square plus RCS plus 1. That is also the mathematical model of the given electrical circuit. Mathematical model of given electrical circuit. Second order, because this differential equation is second order. This is integral differential equation. To make this pure differential equation is you have to different it one more time, then you get here D square I by D square. So in second order, that's why you are getting S square. You take the plus and from L D square I by D square, you get uh, uh, L S square. If initial condition is zero, that's why that L C square you are going to get it. Uh, this is the equation for output. D C is the output voltage. D C D C of S equal to one by C S I of S. So if you divide the output voltage by input voltage uh, in S domain, you get the transfer function. So if the initial conditions are zero. Then we can get the transfer function that is represent sum of output by represent sum of input, where Vc is the output, Vc of T is the output, voltage across the capacitor is the output, V of S is V of T is the input voltage. The ratio between the two in the domain is the transfer function. So in the entire unit, we are going to deal with transfer function only. Even though the mathematical models are differential equations. We are converting the differential equations into transfer functions. We are dealing with, we are going to deal with transfer functions only. So, if you represent the system in transfer function model, then it has the numerator polynomial, denominator polynomial. The rules of denominator polynomials are called poles. The rules of denominator polynomials are called poles of the system. The rules of numerator polynomials are called zeros of the system. But the can be represented in two ways. One is called the pole zero form, another one is called the time constant form. In the first form, the transfer functions will be represented by G of S. Transfer functions will be represented by G of S. The G of S equal to K dash multiplied by S minus Z1 or S plus Z1, S plus Z2, etc. S plus Z1. So where Z1, Z2, etc. Z1 are called the Zeros of the system. Similarly, the denominator S plus P1, S plus P2, etc., S plus Pn, P1, P2, etc., Pn are called poles of the system. This type of representing the system, after doing Marche fraction, after doing factorizing, if you represent the system in this way, then it is called pole zero. Another way of representing the system is divided by P1, divided by P2, divided by Pm, etc. So, if you divide off the entire denominator by these poles, you will get in this form. Here, you will get coefficient for S. The coefficient of S is called time constant. Coefficient of S is called the time constant of the system. So, if you represent the same system this way, then it is called a time constant form. Then it is called a time constant form. So, in most of the systems will be represented in time constant form only. So, we should be very much aware about in this form it is represented, time constant form or pole zero form because this k and this k dash are not equal. The gain of the systems are not equal, that's why we must be very much careful about which type of representation we are using. We must be very much careful because this k and k dash are not equal, therefore the gain will be affected, that's why it is But we are talking about gain in time constant form only. That also we should remember. K and K are not equal, that is one point. Another point is, if we said uh, static gain means that K is represented uh, 
and the k of a transfer function which is represented in time constant form. So, if we say k means we have to assume that it is represented in time constant form. Another form is called uh, the same transfer function can be represented by natural omega, omega n is a natural frequency form. So, here the second order systems are used to represent this way uh, omega n square that is natural frequency of a system. So, natural frequency form. So, the second order sometimes will be represented by this form. That's why I mentioned all these transfer functions here. One, it may be either in whole zero form or it may be in time constant form or it may be in natural frequency form. That's why I mentioned all these things. I am not getting into all those things. That will be in second unit. Uh, we will study about time domain uh, analysis that uh, we are not going to discuss. But uh, uh, when talking about all these things, I should know that we must have aware. That's why I will make. Uh, now we know what is poles, what is zeros. If you see the poles are, this is S plane. This is called S plane. S plane means a, a frequency plane. Frequency domain plane is called S plane. So in that S plane, if you plot the poles, if you plot the poles, if it is on the left hand side of S plane, then it is called, then the system is said to be stable. The poles of the system is on the left hand side of the poles are on the left hand side of the S plane, then the system is said to be stable. In the S plane, the x axis is a real axis, y axis is j mega axis. So any poles having a complex nature means it is not on the real axis, it will be here, either in the uh, upper half plane or in the bottom half plane. If it is complex moves. Here the roots are, the poles are in the left hand side of the S plane, that's why the system gives a stable response. The system gives a stable response. The, let us assume that a car is a system in that it tries to control the system at 60 km per hour, or sometimes it reaches 60 km per hour. It's a stable system. But the here, the system has a right hand side poles. If you check the poles of the system, the poles are on the right hand side. For that, uh, if you give the right hand side the system, if you give any input, uh, the system will go out of order. The unstable system. Its output goes on increasing. The output goes on increasing. So, uh, example for unstable system. Here, the poles are exactly on the same axis. Neither on the left hand side nor on the right hand side. It is exactly on the general axis. If you see that, in that case, the system exhibits sustained oscillation. So, it never settles. It won't go to unstable. But always it exhibits. In the electronics lab, uh, we used to do uh, oscillators experiment, RC phase shift oscillator. In that, we will calculate uh, RC value for each pair. We will put to three such pairs uh, R1, C1, R2, C2, R3, C3, like that. Each pair will give you a, a phase shift of 60 degree. That's why total phase shift will be 180. Transistor will give you another 180 degree phase shift. Therefore, total phase shift is 360 degree. And the total gain a beta equal to 1, that's why the system always exhibits sustained oscillation. We used to say the control system always tells the same thing but in different language, that's all. So, in electronics, if you see the oscillation, the same oscillation we are seeing here also. If it is positive feedback, then it will exhibit oscillation. In the electronic lab, you will calculate RC values, put everything but it won't oscillate. It won't oscillate. But we will adjust the R value at, if you adjust the part of that R value at one particular point it will exhibit R value. Why it is required? I will talk in control point of view. The poles either it will be on the right hand side or on the left hand side because we calculated the R and C, R C values but the vendor supplied R C values may not be the exact values. That's why your calculated value also has some approximation. The vendor supply has a tolerance of 5% or 10%. That's why it may not be 100 ohm exactly if you selected a 100 ohm. That's why the poles may be either on the right hand side or left hand side. If you adjust the part, you are bringing the poles exactly on the J mega axis. That's why the electronics lab will exhibit sustained oscillation. So if the poles are exactly on the J mega axis, if the poles are exactly on the J mega axis, it will oscillate continuously. It is true for physical oscillation also. There we are seeing our electrons are oscillating. We can see physical things also will oscillate. Sometimes you might have seen that when you walk on the 
uh, fast, uh, somebody comes in the opposite way, sometimes if I turn right, they also will turn right. If I turn left, they also will turn right. It means both having the same patient. Both having the same patient. And two, three times they will turn this way and this way, then only they will walk. Uh, we will deliberately do some delay. Then they will go that way, we will go this way. So, it means the for, for that system, temporarily, the both are exactly on the same axis. That's why it oscillates. It is oscillating. Wherever the system oscillates, the poles are very close to J mega axis. The poles are very close to J mega axis. Here, what is the root of this? Uh, you have not yet seen that. Anyhow, I have to tell. Um, root locus is the locus of roots. If you plot the roots of a closed loop system on a graph chain, that is the root locus. How roots are varying? If you <coughs> see that close, this is open loop transfer function. This is open loop transfer function. Open loop transfer function. K is in the numerator. K is in the numerator. Uh, if you put this in closed loop form, K will come in the denominator also. Because if you put a closed loop, the open loop transfer function is G means G of S. Or then if you input it, it gives some output. Suppose I want to make this as closed loop system. Here reference is given, the reference is given, uh, the desired value is given here, it is measured and it is given as feedback. I want to find the transfer function of this closed loop system. We have a feedback concept and this is 1, minus 1. So for that if you find the closed loop transfer function, that is GC of S, if I simplify this in block diagram reduction, you might have seen the seventh rule of block diagram reduction, GC of S is equal to G of S, that is open loop transfer function, divided by 1 plus G of S, H of S. So here, G has some K, here G has some K. If I take that K outside, you are writing K here also. So K becomes part of denominator. That's why the roots of denominator are poles of the system. If poles are on the left hand side, then only system is stable. So, in closed loop system, it may not be stable. A open loop system may be stable. Closed loop system may not be stable because the denominator is modified. Earlier, what is the denominator? K divided by S multiplied by S square plus 6S plus 25. G of S equal to uh, K divided by S multiplied by S square plus 6S plus 25. But G C of S equal to K divided by S multiplied by S square plus 6 S plus 25 whole divided by 1 plus this H equal to 1 that's why I am writing 1 plus K divided by S multiplied by S square plus 6 S plus 25 so if you see that if you take LCM and finally it becomes K divided by K plus S multiplied by S square plus 6 S plus 25 in closed loop system the denominator it becomes K plus the denominator becomes K plus. Therefore, roots are modified. Roots are modified. That's why if open loop system is stable means there is no guarantee that closed loop system is stable. Sometimes open loop system may be unstable. Closed loop system may be stable. So both way is possible. Open loop system is stable, but closed loop system may be unstable. Similarly, open loop stable may be unstable, but the system may be stable. So, we cannot say that if the open loop system poles are on the right left hand side, that's why the system is stable, we cannot say. In Bell Laboratories 1950s, in Bell Laboratories, Nyquist noticed that in the electronics lab, there is no transistor those days. Only all vacuum tubes. In the vacuum tubes, while doing some experiments, amplifiers were designed. While designing that amplifier, they noticed there are some oscillations. They investigated why it oscillates. From that only we got Nyquist magnetic rating. So it is not from control system. The Nyquist magnetic rating is from electronics. The left hand side, but those two system poles, because of K, the poles may not be in the left hand side. For, for example, if you go on increase K, that is the date in 1950 in uh, Bell's laboratories. Once they increase the K, the system becomes oscillatory and it becomes unstable. Uh, as gain increases, the oscillation also increases. It means as 
10 increases, the poles are moving, moving, moving closer together, guys. That's why how should it be increased? Earlier I said that the poles are very close to the JNR axis. Uh, what will happen? The oscillations will be more. Okay. Once it is on the JNR axis, it becomes perfectly oscillatory system. Sustained oscillation. Sustained oscillation means from constant amplitude, always it is oscillating. Neither the amplitude is increasing or decreasing, constant amplitude oscillation. So the poles are on the JNR axis. If, uh, suppose, uh, why the car is uh, not driven with the high speed? I will explain with the control system. If you increase the gain, giving acceleration on the accelerator pedal is increasing gain. If you give more uh, input beam part, you are increasing gain. If you want to increase the gain means you are moving uh, very close to JMI axis. You are moving very close to JMI axis. As speed further increases, 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 the system poles are very close to JMI axis. That's why it may be that because it is very difficult to control. When walking, somebody is coming in the opposite way, you couldn't find a way because of higher gain. In a car that go at the higher speed, you cannot decide because the poles are very close to J and axis. Gain is very high. This we can understand from the root of us because the denominator is function of k. If I vary k from 0 to infinity, how the poles are moving? How the poles are moving? That is root locus. That is root locus. What is root locus? Root locus is locus of closed loop poles. Locus of closed loop poles. But to draw the locus of closed loop poles, we are taking open loop poles only. We are taking open loop only. If we see the sum, G of S is given, not G C of S is given. From G of S, we are plotting closed loop poles. As k is varying from 0 to infinity. This is the root locus for the previous system. Third order system. The poles are complex because s square plus 6s plus 25. Further, if you find the roots, the roots are complex. Uh, that is uh, 3 minus 3 plus or minus j4. The poles, open the poles are there. If I increase k, the poles are moving. The poles are moving. This stage, this stage, this stage. And it goes to infinity. The third pole is starting at uh, the denominator you see s multiplied by s square plus 6s plus 25, one pole is at origin. So if I increase k, this pole is moving to infinity. These two poles are moving to the infinity this way. As k varies from 0 to infinity, poles are moving away. So the poles are moving to the right hand side. So if we increase k beyond certain value, the system becomes unstable. The system becomes unstable. So from the root locus, we can understand that if I increase k to certain value, the system becomes marginally stable, limitedly stable. It continuously oscillates. If further increase, it becomes unstable. Further increase, it becomes unstable. So the purpose of root locus is to find the value of k that will give a stable operation. Find the value of k that will give a stable operation. We can manipulate only one, we can find only one parameter by using root locus, that is the drawback. That is the drawback with the root locus technique. We can find k for suitable value of suitable uh, nature of system. If the poles are here, if the poles are uh, if the poles are here, the damping factor will be like this. If the poles are here, the damping factor will be like this. If the poles are here, the damping poles, the damping factor will be like this. We know. So what I do is I select the poles here because I want a particular type of damping. So at this point, what is the value of k I can find from the root locus. So if I put that value of k, the system will behave as I expected. So that is the purpose of root locus. But we can find only one parameter, that is k. But whether the system is stable or not, we can find from the root locus. Root locus also a yeah, stability analysis plot, but it is in S domain, neither in frequency domain nor in time domain because the S domain is frequency domain. But what parameter we are adjusting? Time domain parameters. K, time constant, zeta, those things are analyzed by using root locus. That's why it is not frequency domain analysis. It is neither frequency domain analysis nor time domain analysis. It is S domain analysis. We can call it.